Christmas came early. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. You know what this video is. I have my hands on the new Chanel Holiday 2023 collection. I just picked this up for my local boutique. I have the five pan eyeshadow palette. I have the highlighter duo and I also have three of the lip products to review for you guys today. We are doing swatches. We're doing applications. I have some comparisons that you all have requested. And of course, I'm going to be completely honest and let you guys know if these are worth your money. So if you want to hear all of my completely honest thoughts, then keep watching. You guys know the drill. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, please and thank you. And if you are new here, consider subscribing to my channel. My name is Sophia. I am a complete luxury beauty addict and I upload new reviews just like this one every single week. We love Chanel on this channel. And as a quick reminder, friends, I'm gonna have any of the makeup that is on my face today linked in the description box down below along with a shopping guide for where you can purchase these products. At the time of me filming this video, these products are only available in Chanel boutiques. Some of them have them, some of them don't. I picked these up in my local Boston boutique so you can find them there, but they are going to be launching online. So just check that description box. I'm gonna have a shopping guide. I know these things sell out fast, so I want you guys to have the opportunity to pick them up. I do use affiliate links. I earn a small commission when you shop through my links. So thank you so much to those of you who have supported my channel through shopping through those links. Let's get into this review. This collection came out of nowhere for me. I didn't see any promo photos. I didn't see any marketing campaigns. I didn't see any leaked images. It just popped up, but I'm glad that I have it now, friends. Unfortunately, it's not on the Chanel website just yet. So I don't have any information about just kind of the inspiration behind the collection, but I do have the products, so that should be enough. Let's start off with the eyeshadow palette. And by the way, guys, I'm gonna put timestamps in the description box if you wanna skip ahead. I do recommend watching through the entirety of this video though, because I don't think all of the products are gonna work for everybody. So keep on watching. We're gonna start off with the eyeshadow palette. This retails for $88 here in the United States. And this is called the Lumiere Graphique Eyeshadow Palette. As you can see, this is a five pan palette and we have five beautiful classic holiday neutrals. All of these shades are kind of like a soft metallic. It is a Chanel formula, so it's not gonna be super bright and foily, but you do get some nice pigmentation there. They are a tad on the glittery side, like just a little bit of holiday shimmer, but they aren't super chunky. I would say the one shade in here that's a little bit different from the rest is definitely this beautiful iridescent white shade. It's more of like a topper. It's more of something that you would finish off your look, which you guys are going to see in the demo. But other than that, you have a beautiful like gold, you have a shimmering bronze, you have a shimmering black, and then you also have this shimmery peachy neutral to work with as well. So very easy shades, really easy to kind of layer on top of each other. I think a lot of people are going to like this color story, but I am gonna show you guys in the demo in just a second how this applies to my eyes. We're gonna create this look. This palette has an 18 month shelf life. It was made in Italy and you do get 4.5 grams of product, which is more than double you would get from a Chanel quad. Just so you know, that's two grams of product. Now, this is more expensive, so you're paying a little bit more for the product and just the whole presentation, et cetera, but just something to keep in mind. And then obviously guys, I can't believe I didn't call this out already. This has the cutest, most darling little sequin embossing. Is it the craziest embossing? No, but there was something about this that I did really like. You guys will see here, it has worn away pretty quickly. Just kind of keep that in mind. Other than that guys, the packaging, it's just the regular Chanel packaging that you get. It's not really my favorite. I do think Chanel packaging, it's a little plasticky, it's a little flimsy. It's not anything to write home about, but if you like the Chanel packaging and you're okay with it, then you're not gonna be disappointed in this. It does come with one of those little velvet pouches like we are accustomed to seeing, and it also comes with one little sponge tip and brush dual-sided applicator. And next up we have the Highlighter Duo. This is called the Duo Lumiere Illuminating Powder Duo from Chanel. This retails for $70. So once again, it's pretty pricey. It is Chanel. And also once again, just like the eyeshadow palette, you get that beautiful sequin embossing. In this highlighter duo, we have a combination of kind of like a pinky champagne and also a pearly white. I'll show you guys the swatches here. On the top, I have the peachy shade. Then in the middle, I have the pearly white shade. And then below, I just kind of swirled them together so you can 
you know, just kind of see what it would look like if you combine them. I like to do that a lot. I did, as I was swatching, I thought for a second that maybe the peach was an overspray. I don't know if you guys can see, see how it's kind of oversprayed right there. But then for science, I did kind of like, I like gouged my highlighter. For you guys, for science, I gouged it with my nail to see if it was an overspray. And as far as I can see, it's not an overspray. It does go all the way down to the bottom. I was about to get real annoyed there for a second, by the way. But for some reason right here where they kind of meet, it does sort of seem to be a little bit of an overspray. That's probably just how they created the product. So just know, that's what I found out, okay guys? Also, I should mention from the swatches, you might notice that this formula, it is not as sort of, it's not as much of like a smooth metallic as what we've seen from other highlighters from Chanel in the past. And I am gonna be doing some comparisons later in this video. It's a little bit glittery, okay? It's a little bit glittery, so wait for the demo so you can see if you like this guys just like the eyeshadow palette this is made in italy it has an 18 month shelf life and it has 7.5 grams of product so those are the two biggest items in the collection at least the ones that i think are going to be the most popular but i do want to let you guys know there are also three really beautiful nail polishes in particular there's one that's called sequins it's like a black it's super sparkly it's so nice i don't use regular nail polish so i didn't pick those up but i did pick up some of the lip products so let me show you guys those first off i picked up one of the rouge allure l'extrait i know i'm probably butchering that name these retail for 58 dollars. they're very expensive and this one is called roaring purple i absolutely love that name so you guys can see what it looks like it'll become more apparent you know the color of this once i apply it to my lips in the demo but there's a swatch for you guys to see the packaging on here does seem to be limited edition it's very beautiful it does look very luxe very classic very kind of like i don't know old hollywood glamour I do really like it. And if you've never tried the formula of this particular lip product, it's kind of like a pigmented balm with a little bit of shine in there. You don't get, you know, a ton of product right there, but a lot of people really like the formula. It's very expensive for what you get. I'm just putting it out there but it's kind of like a more pigmented version of the Dior refillable lipsticks. There are also two shades of the Chanel Rouge Allure Lax. There's only two in this collection, by the way, so I did decide to pick up both. This formula, if you've never tried it before, it is their liquid lipstick formula, but it doesn't dry down. It is extremely hydrating. It gives you a little bit of shine. I really like it. And somehow it lasts on your lips all day. It's not a matte formula. And the two colors that I got are number 90 golden beige. I'll show you what that swatch looks like. It is, I mean, it's a golden beige. It's the, it's the perfect description for it. It's very glittery. I will say that it's a pretty glittery liquid lipstick and then the other one that i have right here is called number 91 fancy prune how could i not have gotten this one it's called fancy prune not just any prune a fancy prune <laughs> and this is kind of like a deeper purple and it is a metallic so once again you're gonna want to watch these demos guys keep watching for these demos and you know what with that it's time for the demo. Those are all of the basic details. Let's put these products on my face. All right, friends, let's get these products on my face. I am gonna start off with the lip products because I don't want the look that I'm gonna create on the eyes to kind of distract from some of these bolder lip shades. So we're gonna do the lip products, then I'll do the eyeshadow, and then I will do the highlighter. I'm gonna start off with this one. This is called Roaring Purple. This is in the L'Extre, L'Extre formula. I know I'm just butchering that. So let's get this one on the lips. It is quite bold. It's kind of like a purple, but it has a little bit of a brown undertone. So it's a little bit more neutral. And I think when it comes to this lippy, less is more. Like if I put it all over my lips, I don't really love the way that it looks. I like it better if I kind of like sheer it out. So I'm just gonna... So there you have it, friends. This is Roaring Purple. I don't think it's that Roaring Purple. It sounds like it's gonna be super extreme. It's actually a really beautiful, elegant color. I can see myself wearing this a lot in the autumn and winter, especially because it's not too bright. It's just kind of like a nice, kind of elegant, deeper color, but with that neutral undertone. So 
This one I actually really like. I was trying this on yesterday with more of like a bolder eye and they were just really clashing. So that's why I wanted to try this on before I put on the eyeshadow. So comment down below, let me know what you think of this color. And now we're gonna move on to the Rouge Allure Lax. So here are the other two lippies, friends. These are in the Rouge Allure Lac formula. I really like this formula. However, both of these shades are quite metallic and have a bit of glitter in them. So I'm just gonna tell you right off the bat, these are not gonna be for everybody. I have golden beige and I also have fancy prune. I'm gonna do fancy prune first. And I actually wanna hear all of your thoughts because I'm like not so sure about this shade. Once again, this is why I'm doing it before I do the eye look. So we're gonna get this on. All right, friends, so this is Fancy Prune. I really love the beautiful, rich, deep purple pruny type of tone of this, but I'm not quite sure if I like how metallic it looks. It's very holiday, it's very holiday, but I'm not quite sure. This is definitely the kind of a lippy that I would wear with like a bare eye, kind of like this, maybe just a little bit of mascara, maybe a little bit of like a plum autumnal blush, maybe the mauve blush that they launched in the fall collection this year. But I'll just get kind of close so you can see just kind of the little subtle sheen that it gives. I do think sometimes metallic lipsticks like this, just because of the finish, it can emphasize the lines in the lips just a little bit. And I also wanted to show you guys a quick swatch comparison of the Roaring Purple versus the Fancy Prune. If you want something that's maybe a little bit subtle, go for the Roaring Purple. All right, final lip color to try on. This is Golden Beige. And this one, I'm really not so sure of. I don't think this is gonna be for everyone. I don't know, you guys are gonna have to let me know. So let me just show you what this looks like. It is straight up gold and it's not just glittery like a Dior lip maximizer where you have kind of a more translucent base and then there's kind of like some beautiful like blurring reflecting glitter inside it actually has kind of like that metallic base just like the fancy prune did except this is a beige base so let's get this on you guys can tell me what you think So this is Golden Beige, friends. Let me know what you think. It is very metallic. And you know what? I do think that this would look a little bit better on somebody that has maybe more flesh-toned lips or if your lips are a little bit more like on the brown side, if you have a deeper skin tone, you just put like a nice light wash of this. I think this actually might look better on you than it does on me. My natural lip color, as you saw, it's very rosy, so a lot of times when I go in with like very light nude lipsticks or light gold, something like this, the colors kind of combat each other, and then I get this. <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm one of those statue people on the street. You know how like there's those people on the street that, you know, maybe they dress up as like the Mona Lisa or the Tin Man or a famous statue or something like that, and you think it's a statue? And then all of a sudden they move and they startle you. That's what I feel like I look like. I don't even know. That's what came into my mind, guys. But this is golden beige. It's a bit much. It's a bit much. I don't think it's going to be for everybody. So I am going to just like blot a little bit off with my makeup eraser here. So that now when we do the eye look, it doesn't look too whack. See, that looks better. That looks better. Just a little bit looks very beautiful, but a lot, I look like a statue. Anyway, we're going to dive into the eyeshadow palette because I know that's what a lot of you guys are waiting for. So thank you for your patience, guys. I'm going to create, I think, like a beautiful glam holiday look. That's kind of what I'm feeling today. And the first shade that I'm going to go into is this one right here, kind of like that peachy mid-tone shade. And I'm just going to use that as my start, as my start for this look, oh, it's beautiful. These shades, they are not super glittery, at least just kind of looking at the swatches, except the white one. The white one does have, I don't wanna say a little bit of chunkiness to it, but I don't know, it does have a little bit of chunkiness to it, but we're gonna see how it applies. This is a very light wash of shimmer here. I'll let you see on the brush. It does pick up quite well onto my little goat hair brush here. This is kind of like a good one and done shade because this shade is actually pretty similar in tone to my natural skin color. I'll just get close here so that you can see 
the sheen and the texture of that. I don't see it emphasizing any texture on my lids. Next, I'm going to take this shade here on the end, which is the other kind of lighter to mid-tone gold, and I'm just going to pop that on the lower lash line. It's a very similar effect to the peachy shade, except it just has a different undertone. This is more of like a cooler tone gold. These are applying like Chanel shadows, like that's not the poppiest metallic that you're going to get. It's not like a Charlotte Tilbury. It's not like a Natasha Denona. So if that's kind of like what you go for, if you're used to that from Chanel, which I know a lot of you are, then I think you're going to be happy with the finish of these. It's very easy to spread across the eye too. I don't like to kind of tug too much to get the color on. I want to start layering in some of these darker shades. So I'm going to go into this one right here. It's a beautiful bronze. And I'm going to start building that up on the outer part of the eye. All of these shadows are shimmers, so you don't really get any mattes, but what I've come to learn is that a lot of times with like Chanel, Tom Ford, and Dior shadows, because the metallics are not like crazy sheeny, you can put them in the crease of the eye kind of like you would a matte shade. It doesn't look too crazy. It took me a while to get used to that, <laughs> but I'm used to it. You guys can see the difference between this eye and this eye. That's just like a really nice subtle depth that I added there. You could put on some mascara and this would be a really nice day look but maybe slightly more sultry or you could pop on an eyeliner and you can kind of take it to the next level i'm not going to do anything that crazy today but i do want to show you how you can kind of continuously make this more glam do make sure that you tap off your brush here not because i'm getting like a ton of fallout or anything like that but just because these shades just looking at them they do have quite a bit of sparkle and I just wouldn't want that to, you know, end up on the tops of your cheeks. That's annoying to clean up. I'm also going to take a little bit of that bronze shade onto the little foamy applicator. And I'm going to put it in the outer corner. Very, very subtle. Because I want this look to be a little bit more glam and festive. So far, this look is pretty subtle. I'm going to go into the black. I love black shadows because I feel like you could basically take any look up a notch. I know a lot of people, they get a bit intimidated, but I'm going to use this little brush so that I can be very precise. And that way, I'm not going to go overboard. So let's see how pigmented this is. Okay, we've got some pigment there. You can use this as a liner as well. Like if you don't know what to do with the black, just take a teeny little brush, use it as a liner to create a little bit of dimension along the upper lash line or lower lash line and you're good. The black has shimmer in it as well. I don't dislike it, but I kind of wish they just gave us a matte black. And I don't know, that's just because I like the contrast between a matte black and the shimmers. Like I feel like it just gives so much more depth and dimension to a look, but alas, we have another black with sparkles in it. I can make it work. So here's what it looks like with a little bit of the black blended on the outer corner of the eye and without. So you can just kind of see your options in terms of looks. So here is the black applied to both of the eyes. It kind of blends out into like a smoky gray. It's not super true to color, but I'm kind of okay with that because I'm going for more of like a soft glam or a subtle glam. I'm just kind of blending around right now with my little hourglass powder because I want it to be a bit softer and I just kind of want to like snatch up that line that I did with the deeper eyeshadow. I'm excited for this next part because we're going to go into that sparkly white shade. I just have a little flat brush. I did wet it so that we can get this very glittery shadow to adhere. Ooh, it has a beautiful like iridescence to it as well. Oh, <laughs> where do I want to put this? Let's do it in the inner corner. I'm gonna do it in the inner corner. Yes, that's what I want. This is what I like from holiday things. Little touches of sparkle and frostiness. I'm gonna put a little bit in the center of the lid. It's a little bit chunky. It's a little bit chunky, but you know, it's a nice topper shade. I do like the fact that it gives more sparkle because that's kind of what we look for in a holiday collection. So there you go. You can kind of See that little pop of white there in the inner corner and also a flash of that icy tone 
in the center of the eye. I'm gonna go put on some eyeliner, some mascara, and I'll be right back. Ta-da! This is the final look, friends, with the eyeshadow palette. Comment down below and let me know what you think. I decided to go for a liquid eyeliner just to get kind of more of like a, a crisp, neat look, very Chanel, and then I applied some mascara. I like the way that this came out. It's, you know, a little bit more subtle. It's not extremely metallic, but I do like that little pop of shimmer there. When I went to apply my eyeliner, I did notice I had, you can see it right there, <laughs> just a little bit of fallout, but it was pretty easy to just kind of wipe away as you saw me do right there. So yeah, let me know what you think of this. I love the subtle smoke from the black, and I don't think you need to use all five shades to get a really nice look like this, but I think pairing it with a nice black eyeliner or even like a dark brown eyeliner can kind of transform the look. And then lastly, we gotta try the Illuminating Powder Duo. So of course we have the slightly darker peachier shade and then we have the pearly white. I'm gonna start off with the peachy shade on one cheek and then we're gonna do the white on the other and then Maybe we'll mix it together. You definitely, definitely, I mean, look how much that picks up. You wanna tap off that brush because yeah, it just gets everywhere. It gets everywhere. All right, so let's get the peach here. <laughs> it's pretty glittery. Okay. All right, all right. It's definitely very pungent. <laughs> it's very punchy. It's glittery. I think it looks nice. I like the look of it, but I do worry a little bit much if you have a little bit more texture to your skin. I know a lot of you guys, you don't wanna emphasize texture. I'm a little bit worried about how this might look, but this actually looks better than I thought it was going to based off the swatches. You all can comment down below and let me know how that looks. I actually kind of like it. I think it's pretty. I'm gonna have to go look at it in different lighting and see if that's the case. But so far, I think that that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go into the white shade in this palette. Okay. It's, it's definitely an icy shade. It's a choice for sure. That's what it looks like. I like that it has a little bit of like multi-dimension, but it is very frosty. If you don't like something that's frosty and, and kind of glittery, to be honest, I don't think that this is gonna be for you. And if you have a deeper skin tone, I mean, it's gonna be, it's like really, it's gonna bounce off those cheekbones. Let's put a little bit of the pearly side on top of the peachy side here. So you can see what this looks like mixed together, it just kind of brightens it up a little bit. It's kind of like very similar tones. I'll show you right here. Very similar tones to these two shades right there in the palette. Let me know all of your thoughts. Now we're gonna get into the comparisons, guys. I'm gonna show you how these look up against some other really popular luxury beauty products, previous holiday collections, other things that you guys requested. So we're gonna get into that right now. And then at the end of the video, I'll sum up my final thoughts and let you know which of these I think are worth picking up. All right, friends, let's do some comparisons here, starting off with the eyeshadow palette. I apologize if the audio is a little bit weirder in this section. I am speaking directly into a marble table, so I know it could be a little bit echoey. One of the biggest requests for comparisons that I got is with the Dior Holiday Collection from last year. So here I have Galactic and I have Cosmic Eyes. I definitely think that Cosmic Eyes is more of a comparable palette, so I am going to just remove galactic for a second and show you this quick little side by side right here i mean i think that they're pretty similar i really don't think that you need this one from chanel if you have this one from dior the biggest difference is that this one has that really pretty iridescent white topper and then this one has this kind of like golden shade but hey i know that this one is not available anymore you guys should definitely check out though the new christian dior beauty collection that's coming out for this holiday. I don't have that collection yet, but the colors are very, very similar. So I just wanna show you guys that side-by-side, -side, you definitely have these shades already. And here are some side-by-side -side swatches, guys. I'm always gonna have the Chanel palette on the left and the comparison palette on the right. So that one on the right is from Dior. I do really like the black shade in the Chanel palette a lot better. Notice how much better it swatches, honestly. I might like the Chanel one a little bit more than the Dior one. I know, what am I saying here? Because I love Dior, 
But there you guys go. There are some comparisons. I also thought this was a great suggestion. This is with Dior Grand Ball. This is one of their classic palettes. I see a lot of similarities here as well, but I think here we really need to see the swatches. The Dior Grand Ball is on the right. And I think the main difference is that the metallics or I should say like the satiny metallics in the Dior palette are just a little bit brighter and just, I don't know, more like illuminating, just like a lighter tone. Whereas I think you can get kind of like a more sultry look with the Chanel because you have that bronze shade. However, I really do think you can dupe the vibes. Here's a holiday palette that was launched last year that I instantly thought of. This is Bronze Bliss from Pat McGrath. This is one of the five pan palettes. The formula here is very different. It is very very metallic but i just want to show you guys that like the shades are pretty similar this is almost like the more extreme version of the chanel palette it's the pat mcgrath version of the chanel palette next up here i have tisse rivoli from chanel this one is kind of like nice soft sultry cool tones but i do think that the undertone is a little bit different like to me this has a slight like mauvey undertone it's a little more grazy it's a little bit more soft it kind of has those very similar elegant vibes but I think it's easy enough to see side by side that they aren't the same palette I do think you could you know technically have both okay so here I'm lumping together a lot of comparison requests all of these palettes are very similar but I actually don't think they are the same as the Chanel so I have Dior soft cashmere I have YSL store dolls this is the Chanel tweed brunette rose palette that was limited edition and then we have Tom Ford nude dip notice how all of these almost like Tisse Rivoli. They kind of have like that grazy tone. Like it's more nude. It's a little bit softer. It's just like more of that like fleshy tone. Whereas to me, the Chanel palette, this is more like classic holiday golds and browns, the white, the black. Like you do get a lot of nice contrast there. Maybe this color and this color, or maybe like that color and that color, you can kind of like dupe some of these. But I just kind of wanted to show you a big overlay here just to kind of get it out of the way. I think that they're different enough. And then here we have the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. There are a lot of similarities here. One thing about the Glam Palette that I always wanted was a black. So I like the fact that we have a black and a white in the Chanel Palette. So I tried my best to dupe it here with the Natasha shadows that are on the left. And you know, it's close. It's pretty close. You don't really have a substitute for that beautiful bronze shade and the white topper in the Natasha palette, but you know, you guys can comment down below and let me know what you think. Some of you were asking me for comparisons with the Byredo Remembrance palette, or at least like the silvers and golds. So I'll just show you guys a quick swatch comparison. I don't really think that these are super similar it does kind of show though that this chanel palette does have a little bit more of like a metallic impact than other ones you might have seen in the past but the Byredo remembrance palette is a very different palette i don't think you can really dupe that beautiful silver and gold that you get right there in that palette i actually went into that chanel tweed brunette rose palette not to show you guys a like color comparison but just to show you a formula comparison so you can really see how the shades on the left from the holiday palette see how much punchier they are than the ones in the brunette rose like those are much more of a soft satin i still feel like the chanel ones look very elegant and kind of you know not too overdone on the eye but you can tell that it's definitely like a a more festive type of formula compared to others that they've launched. Let's do some highlighter comparisons. So right here is a side-by-side -side with that limited edition Camellia highlighter. It is no longer available. Unfortunately, I do kind of wish that they would just bring it back, but alas, here I am doing another comparison with it. Let's take a look at some swatches. All right, so we have the holiday highlighter on the top and the Camellia one on the bottom. This is what I'm talking about, friends. Like, the other luminizers have a much smoother appearance on the skin. The tone of these is actually very similar, but hopefully you can kind of tell from that light there just how much glittery the one from the Holiday Collection is. It doesn't have as much of a base. Here are the Holiday Luminizers from last year, guys. My goodness, they are oversized. You got so much product with these. And if I'm not mistaken, I think each of these was like $90 or $100. So you did get a lot more product <laughs> last year for your dollar. I'm just going to say that. They're a lot deeper and warmer. I'm going to do a comparison 
with the Or Rose and the Holiday palette. So same thing here in terms of the formula. The Or Rose has a lot smoother of a texture. And then obviously you can see right there that the color is much deeper and warmer. For me, this is more of like a blush topper that I kind of like to buff into my other powder products. But the, uh, the one from the Holiday Collection is definitely more of a highlighter for me. Somebody asked me to compare the highlighter up against that highlighter here that is in the Jellyfish palette. So I'm gonna do that one next. So the one on the bottom there is from the Jellyfish palette. That one is a little bit lighter. It's kind of um, frostier, I think is the good word for it. It's not as glittery. I really like the highlighter from the Jellyfish palette. Here is the Stella highlighter from Chantecai. So let's do this one next. The Chantecai one is just so smooth. For me, this is a very, very natural highlighter. It's even smoother, I would say, than the Chanel Luminizers. And I think it's because it's like a baked formula. But the color is a little bit more on like the nudie side as opposed to like a pinky side. And then here, friends, I have the Dior Forever Luminizers. I have Nude Glow and I also have Golden Glow. They look a little bit different when swatch so. So let me swatch them. So at the top, we have have the Chanel and then we have nude glow and then we have golden glow. The Chanel one is a little bit lighter and it's a little bit pinkier. I will say Dior does have a pink highlight, but that one is icier. That one looks more like it actually looks pink, whereas the Chanel one is kind of like a pinky beige. All right, friends, you've made it to the end. I hope that those comparisons were helpful. Now it is time for my final thoughts. I'm going to help you figure out what, if anything, you should pick up from this collection. If any of these pieces are worth it, I would say in general, this collection, it's very elegant. You know, I, I like the makeup that I put on today. But this collection isn't my favorite, I'll just be honest. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but I don't think that this collection is groundbreaking. I don't think it's all that special. You're really not getting anything special in terms of packaging. You are getting an embossing, but as you can see, the embossing wears away pretty quickly. I like the color selection. It's very elegant and wearable. You know, for holiday collections, we do tend to see more wearable colors. But for some of the items, the finishes, they just don't make as much sense to me. It kind of seems like they wanted to go the classic route. They wanted to go the route where they would sell a lot of product, but then they were like trying to do something a little bit different and it just like didn't work out all that well. I will say my favorite item in this collection is the eyeshadow palette. I really like the selection of shades. I like the pigmentation. The pigmentation is there. There's a little bit of sparkle, but you still kind of get that softness that the Chanel customer really likes. It's not gonna highlight any kind of texture or dryness or anything like that on the lid. So you get something that's holiday, but it's still very Chanel. I like the eye look that I created today. I had fun with the palette. But you guys did see in the comparison section, I do have several palettes that are just like this one. I think if you have the Dior Grand Ball palette, I think if you have that Pat McGrath palette, I think if you have even kind of like the Natasha Denona Glam palette, you definitely can dupe these vibes. It's a beautiful palette. I really enjoy it. I think I am going to get some use out of it this holiday season, but it's not like it is the most groundbreaking thing that Chanel has ever launched. In fact, a lot of you guys told me that this looks just like that, what was it, the number five anniversary palette, I think it was. I don't have that palette. A lot of you guys thought it looked like the Mediterranean palette. I think it was two holidays ago. Chanel also came out with some single eyeshadows in very, very similar shades. So it's not anything different. In fact, I don't know if you guys have seen some of my recent Will I Buy It style of videos. They're called Pass or Yes, and I do them pretty much every two weeks. In my latest episode, we talked about the Dior Holiday Collection. I'll put an image up here. It's very similar colors. So a lot of brands are doing these metallics. I get why they're doing it, but it is a little bit safe. I just wanna call all of this out, guys. You know, just in case you're trying to decide between different collections and decide what to get. And by the way, I will be getting that Dior collection. I will be reviewing it and I will be comparing it to this one from Chanel. Moving along to some of the other products in this collection, you know, the highlighter duo, I really wanted to like this one more. I don't dislike it, but it's just a little bit too glittery. And I'm kind of disappointed to say that because I know a lot of you guys you really don't care for glittery highlighters. I get that it's holiday, but I felt like we could have gone with, I don't know, maybe a different embossing, maybe like special packaging, something like that. You know, I don't know if you guys pay attention to Chanel ready to wear, but this fall and winter season, Virginie did a collection that was focused around 
the Chanel Camellia. Everything was very like floral and Camellia focused. I'll be honest, I didn't care for the collection at all, but I did think that that collection would have translated really beautifully into a holiday makeup collection or at least something for sort of like fall and winter. I would have loved for them to have just brought back the Camellia highlighter, maybe do it in a couple shades, maybe offer one in like a really ornate, beautiful, like limited edition packaging and just charge a little bit more for it, but give me something special. I felt like they could have really run with that theme that they had in the ready to wear collection. This seems a little bit disconnected to me, but I don't know, maybe that's an unpopular opinion. But to me, I felt like there was a lot of potential and this is just like, you know, it's, it's just like a highlighter. It's like the same shades as always. It's very much like a see it from space type of highlighter or, you know, luminizer or illuminator, whatever you want to call it. It's a highlighter. You know what? In fact, if you're looking for something that is in these tones, Tom Ford, the Soleil Neige collection for this season, he has very similar highlighters, very similar tones. That formula, I think, is a lot better than this. If you're looking for something that was kind of like the Camellia highlighter from Chanel, check out the Pinky Era highlighter from that collection. And I will link it down below as soon as it becomes available. And then finally, friends, we have the lip products. I would say in general, I'm not super impressed by the lip products in this collection. They aren't my favorite. I do prefer the ones that were in the fall collection. The two colors that I got there were in the Rouge Coco Bloom formula and the colors are called Ease, which is a beautiful nude. And then I also got the color Wild, which is a beautiful purple. And those two colors, they've been like, those have been my go-tos over the past couple of weeks. And you guys always ask me what is on my lips. So maybe go back and check out those colors because I don't know, at least for me, I prefer those. I think that the colors in this collection are beautiful but the textures just aren't, they're not to my preference. They're very glittery. A lot of them are pretty metallic. I would say my favorite one is probably the Roaring Purple in the L'Extre formula, but it's just so expensive. It's like, I probably could have done without it. I do like the fact that it has that kind of brown undertone. So this would be the one, like if anything, I would recommend you checking out. I think it's a really nice fall shade. The Rouge Allure Lax, I don't know, these are just a little bit weird, guys. I really like the formula, but they did like metallic liquid lipsticks for the Chanel customer. Comment down below, do you like metallic lipsticks? Do you like metallic liquid lipsticks? Because I feel like I could pull these off, but they're not really the, they're not really the kind of thing that I'm, I'm reaching for every day. So if you're going to pay for it, really think like, how often are you going to wear it? I wore the golden beige one last night and I went into the other room and asked my boyfriend, what do you think of my lipstick? And he said, it's weird. <laughs> that was his review that this one looks weird. I think it looks okay if I just put a little bit on, but in general, I think that these, they kind of emphasize the lines in the lips and they're not like the most flattering. So I would say that these are probably a skip. So in summary, friends, I think there's some hits. I think there's some misses. I do think a lot of you guys are really gonna like this collection, but I do just wanna highlight because it's so expensive, the things that are dupable, the things that are maybe a little bit more sparkly, the things that maybe are a little bit too metallic. So you guys can figure out what you want to spend your hard-earned coin on this holiday season. There's a lot of collections that are coming out. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate that. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I have a lot more holiday collection reviews coming out just like this one. And now it is your turn, friends. Sound off in those comments down below and let me know what do you think about this collection? Have you tried it yet? What are you interested in picking up? Did I sway you? Either way, I would love to know. It's okay if we disagree by the way that's totally fine because we're just here to have fun with makeup to chat to discuss to debate it's all in good fun so don't give me a thumbs down let me know what you think in the comments section because I would love to know and with that friends I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one goodbye <music>